So the topics we plan to uh, be covered today will be uh, an introduction to the SHARE Foundation, uh, an overview on actually helping the young people to connect with their accounts. So that will just give some brief um, detail on there. Uh, discussion about the letters that are issued to the local authority or trust. Understanding the different links that we've provided for claiming the account. Uh, process for young people locating their account. The process for young people claiming their account. Uh, things to be aware of for when young people are trying to connect to their account. And we will have a questions um, session at the end. So the Share Foundation, so we're a registered charity and we've been operating since 2005. Um, at that time, we were raising uh, money for um, child trust funds for the local area. Um, but then we were awarded the government contract in 2012 to set up and administer the junior ISIS for looked after children um, on behalf of the Department for Education. That contract widened in 2017, and we uh, now also cover the child trust funds where there is no one in position of parental responsibility. And the good news is that we have um, been awarded the contract. It's been renewed for another four years from April, 2023. All costs are covered by the government or a philanthropist. So nothing that um, is provided in terms of donations, et cetera, is, is used by ourselves. 100% goes to the young people. Um, so the Junior ISIS and Child Trust Funds, both are long-term um, saving accounts set up by the government and were or are available to all children under 18 in the UK. Um, where we say were, the Child Trust Fund scheme closed for new accounts on the 2nd of January 2011, and that's when the Junior ISA scheme took over. So anyone born from the 1st of September 2002, and they were born in the UK, and up to the 2nd of January 2011, where someone was claiming child benefit for them, are likely to have a Child Trust Fund, and any young people from um, the 3rd of January 1994 up to the 31st of August 2002, and then the 3rd of January 2011 thereafter will be part of the Junior ISA scheme for looked after children. Anyone can contribute to an account. The Share Foundation can only manage child trust fund accounts where local authorities or healthcare trusts confirm that there is no one or no one suitable in a position of parental responsibility. So when we receive the data, we will um, obviously identify the young person with their date of birth. And if they're born in the child trust fund years, we will then be going back to the local authority to ask them if there is anyone with parental responsibility and if there is, if, that, if they deem that person to be suitable to be managing that account, and where they say no to someone being suitable, that's where we, the Share Foundation, will then go to HMRC to locate where the account was opened at the time the young person was born. And then we go to the account provider to explain that we will be uh, the register contact. So hopefully that um, explains that position. Has anyone got any questions at this, this stage? No, thank you. So just a very quick overview then on helping young people to connect with their accounts. We, the Share Foundation, have set up some web applications for young people. There are three links and we will discuss those um, and why they're different. Um, the account provider, that's a common terminology that will be used throughout the process for young people. And the account provider is basically the financial organisation that hold the account. And the account holder being the young person that actually um, the account belongs to. And I'm just um, re-emphasising those because obviously that will be part of the process with those sort of wordings maybe that the young people will hear uh, when they go to claim their account. 
Taking control of an account means that a young person from the age of 16 can take control of a child trust fund or a junior ISA. Um, they cannot access their money until they're 18, but at 16, they can become the registered contact. And that will mean that they can receive information about the account, statements, etc., and make investment decisions on that. If a young pair, a person in care does take control of their account from 16 before they leave care and they move the account while they're in care after taking control of it, then the share foundation will not be able to administer contributions to it. Now, um, Deborah will cover the letters that we send, but in the letter, the 16 letter, we do state this. We do advise the young person that once they take control, if as long as they leave it where it is, we can still continue to administer contributions. If they do move it, we would not be able to. So hopefully that's um, clarified that situation. Child Trust Fund or Junior ISA, a young person cannot have both. Sometimes we do have young people that say, well, I've got the, I've had the Junior ISA because, you know, I was in care and now um, I realise I might have a Child Trust Fund as well, but, but they don't. So it's one or the other, legally, that is, they cannot have what, uh, both. Um, the timescales that we provide in any information about claiming account are a guide. We are reliant upon HMRC sometimes for those where we don't know where the account is. Um, and therefore that does often take a while. So, you know, we can, we can only sort of provide a guide of timescales. Um, and the role of the Share Foundation is very much in terms of helping young people to actually claim their account. Obviously, once they know who their account provider is, it will be then them for the young person because the, the account is in their name, for them to actually contact the account provider directly to take control. So we wouldn't actually get involved with that part of them actually taking control. They would need to do that themselves and obviously then also provide verification to the account provider through ID, etc. But obviously we are here to help and if they're having trouble for any reason because there's obstacles, then obviously we will try to help. That's what we want to make sure these young people get their accounts. Um, we have produced a guide for LA and Trusts and how a young person in care or care leaver can locate their account. And it's a very detailed step by step guide. So we do have that available if anybody wants that in a PDF format. We have sent that out, I think, to other some local authorities already. Um, we can also provide local authorities and trusts with a list of the looked after children who have already completed the process of locating their account. Um, so we do, uh, we are able to access a report to provide that uh, by local authority if that's required. Uh, child trust fund providers do not all advise when a young person has taken control of an account. So you will find that on the valuation report, um, for those of you who receive that, and that's normally sent to our main contacts every quarter, um, where an account is still showing on there with a the value, um, it could be, if it's a child trust fund, it could be that they have claimed it, but because the, um, sorry, the child trust fund provider has not let us know that the young person has taken control, then it would remain on there because obviously that's the information. We haven't had that information from them. The junior ISAs are very good. The ISA provide, junior ISA providers will, will advise us on a regular basis, but there's 60 odd child trust fund providers so that relationship is probably not as um, uh, as easy for them to actually or that resource is not as easy for them to actually um, keep advising us on that. Has anyone got any um, questions so far? <coughs> no that's great lovely Deborah I'll, I'll hand you over to Deborah. Okay shall I start with the letters? <laughs> Thank you. OK, so um, <clears throat> we issue a number of letters um, throughout the time that a young person is in care. 
Um, you will receive letters, those of you that, that are the main contact, will receive um, a letter at age 16 for the young person and then again at 17 and a half if they haven't claimed their account. Um, that letter will encourage them to complete a form on our website, which will allow us to write back to them with their account information. Um, the letters are personalised to the young person and does give them the correct link. Uh, the links are date of birth sensitive, um, deciding on depending on whether or not they have a junior ISA or a trust fund, so they need to have the correct template. So please ensure that the right letter is sent to the right young person. Um, when you submit your data, uh, anyone with a not in care status, if we are managing an account, this will trigger a status change letter. Um, the status change letter will generally have a change of contact form with it. These letters need to be passed on to the appropriate adult for the young person as it gives them guidance on how to take control of the account on behalf of the young person. Um, they would then manage the account going forward and we would cease to have any involvement with it. Um, as I say, those letters are emailed over. We can reissue them if you need us to, um, but just be aware that we can't do them in giant batches. We would need to be doing them kind of maybe 10 to 12 at a time. So we would ask you to keep a copy at your end in case the family come back and need a second copy. Um, <clears throat> Also, if you submit a young person on your data who's eligible for a junior ISA payment, but has reached the age of 17 and 10 months, we don't have sufficient time to open a junior ISA for that young person. Um, in that situation, they would receive a check, uh, which would come across to the main contact for onward transmission to the young person so that they can just uh, claim that payment. If you have young people that have reached a year in care but have already left but haven't been reported you can also report them to us as retrospectives um, and in that situation we would either be able to issue a check for any young person over 17 and 10 months or we would ask the appropriate adult to open a junior ISA in the name of the young person which we would then pay into with the junior ISA credit as an alternative. Um, so there are quite a few options. Um, if you've got any queries on any of them, just drop us a line and we can have a look at them individually. Um, does anyone have any questions on those? Perfect. Thank you, Deborah. Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. Dagmar. Right. This is the um, this is where the links come in. So um, the My JISA link is for children that were in care but born before the Child Trust Fund years or have left the care. So if they go onto this link, they can then put their details in. That will be loaded onto our database. If we've got a match, we can then get a letter to them, um, which will provide the account details for the provider, contact telephone number, email address for them to contact that um, provider to confirm what identification documents they need. One of them will definitely be a bank statement, but they will accept certified copies of passports, driving license, and maybe the young person has got utility bills. Um, the MyCTF, this is um, for children that have been in care, where we are the registered contact. Um, and they can go on to this one and complete the form. It will come across to our database and then we can um, let them know where the account is. So these all work in more or less the same way with account provider details. The last one, this is where children have um, been in care, but they've had a responsible adult or this also helps children that have never been in care and they've gone onto our website and got our telephone number. This form needs to be completed and then signed and sent to us It's with the uh, address. It's a free, free post address. And then them signing it gives us permission to go to HMRC to find the account if we don't have it. Um, the links for the uh, 
16 plus children if they could use their own email address because it's them that we need to contact to be able to let them know where the accounts are we have had occasions where the local authority of, or the social workers put their email address in of course the, the young person will never get that email to let them know where the account is so um if the T share center were not the registered contact for the account then this is where they will need to go to the hmrc website and uh, complete the form there and then hmrc will go back to them and say where the account is so it's quite straightforward but um, as i say on occasions we've we've had where maybe um the wrong email address has been put in the child has completed the form but then moved address so in that case where they've completed the form or they've lost the letter with the account details on they can email us from their email address and put their old uh, address and their new address and we can resend the letters out to them any questions so far Perfect. Thank you, Dagmar. OK, so moving on to the actual process so that you all understand the sort of process that the young person will, will follow, really. Oh, Elaine, sorry, I see you have a question. I'm so sorry it took me so long to oh, get my hand. Don't worry, don't worry at all. <laughs> I just wanted to ask about that um, first link that was on the previous slide, sorry. I work um, predominantly with adoptive parents. Um, would that be the link? that they would go on to check, um, the My Junior Isa one, to check if their child has already had a Junior Isa um, no. opened up while they were in care? No, so these links that Dagmar's explained are only for young people, and only, only for young people who are age 16 and over. Sorry, or, I thought that was only the last one. Okay. No, all of that, sorry. I, I, all of these I, link, links yeah. are relevant for young people only. Um, okay. For adoptive parents, when the local authority or trust submit their data and yeah. that status of a young person goes to left care, yeah. um, then a letter, status change letter is what we call it, will be sent to the, our main contact at the local authority and that should be being sent to the adoptive parent to take control of the account. That's quite important. That, yeah. um, many times that will have a form and that form has been um, pre-populated and signed by the Share Foundation so that when the account provider gets that form, they'll have the comfort of knowing that this, this parent um, or, or you know, whoever, this adult, if you like, is asking to become the registered contact, we've authorised that. So that status change letter is very important. I think it's something that Deborah mentioned earlier, and it should come through the system, through the data, when that status of a young person has changed. Okay, that's Does that make sense, Elaine? It does make sense. It, there, it's an issue for us then, um, because I think that's not always happening. Okay, so I, which local authority, but, sorry, are you from, Elaine? I work in uh, Scotland, so I'm in uh, South Lanarkshire Council. Okay, Deborah, could you help there in terms of who the main contact is, or at least let Elaine know? Yeah, we, we've actually had a, a request um, through in the last couple of weeks where they're asking for reissuing of a lot of their status change letters, so I think he has actually got it in hand, but um, I can it's certainly let you know who it is, if you like. I think it might be John Campbell actually, but I'm not. Yes, yes, uh, you're right. Yeah, it is. Great. No, yeah. thanks. He's so um, he sent through quite the list that he wants um, sure. resending, so it's it's Thank probably you. on its way. He's on it. Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no problem, worries. Elaine. No problem. So going on to the actual process, so the young person will complete um, this particular process. Just wanted to run through it so you've all got an understanding of where you're supporting young people. Um, so the young person will complete the online form using the relevant link provided to them. As Deborah has already mentioned, in that letter that they receive uh, via the local authority, the relevant link will be in there. So we will have already provided the right link that they need. 
Um, when they do that, once uh, they submit it, an acknowledgement email will be received, so they've got the comfort of knowing it's actually worked. Um, for the spine CTF only, uh, we will need the printed form. That's because we use it, it's used as a subject access request, as Dag Dagmar's already mentioned, which needs to go to um, HMRC with a wet signature. So if um, the young person hasn't got access to a printer, they can, they can simply let us know and we can print and sign and send it to them. It's, sorry, print and post, post it to them so that they can sign it and return it. Um, after one week, they do get a reminder email anyway. And after 21 days, we send the form anyway. So we try our utmost to make sure that, that there's no obstacles for a young person getting that form to us because we don't want that process obviously to be stopped. Um, the Share Foundation have an automated process, so we check the forms against our Looked After Children database. Where the Share Foundation are the registered contact and a match is found, um, a letter is sent. So I think um, Dagmar's already mentioned that. So that's relevant for the My CTF and the Fine CTF. A letter is sent. And the reason why we do it by letter is that that's because there will be an account number on there. So we want to send it securely by letter. Where no match in a looked after children database is found, we have a relationship with an organisation called the Tracing Group. And they have um, a number of uh, big uh, child trust fund providers that have signed up to sort of be part of the database. So we can check against that database and often we will find a match quite quickly and we will email the young person in that respect because it will only provide the account provider and the account provider's details. There will be no account number because if we've not found it in our looked after children database, we have not been the registered contact, there will be no account number. So it will simply be an account provider name a telephone number and their email address, but it will be a good explanation as well how the young person can go about now then contacting the account provider to take control. So we do sort of put some wording around that too. Um, if no match is found in the tracing group, um, then we will, forgive me, um, we, for, for the My CTF, we will actually print the form and send it to the young person because actually normally we don't ask for the form in the My CTF, um, but where we have not been able to match, so they've used the My CTF link, which is fine, um, we will send them the form, they can return that and then we can send it on to HMRC for investigation. For the fine CTF, we will do the same. So we need the signed form and that will go to HMRC for investigation. I will be honest with you, the um, HMRC investigation can take, I would say at least six weeks. Um, so that's a longer process. That's why we're really pleased we've got the tracing group database because that has speeded that process up a little bit but we are reliant sometimes upon it and HMRC um, to provide us with that information. So once we get that, um, you know, as I say, I'd, I'd sort of plan around about six weeks, but as I say, we can't always guarantee exactly. Um, if the, the junior ISA, if they've done something by the My JISA and um, we don't actually match it, then we, we have yeah. some, what I call an eyes on approach. So we manually look at the information that's been provided by that young person and have a look at, against our looked after children database because my JISA will only be done by a looked after child because it relates to the JISA um, uh, pro, uh, scheme, sorry, the my JISA, um, sorry, the junior ISA scheme for looked after children. So we will actually have eyes on and we will look at that and we'll sometimes, I mean, certainly, I. I can speak from experience by looking at that, you can see that potentially they've got the name around the wrong way, potentially they've put the wrong local authority. So there's often very easy reasons and we can get those resolved easily by, by emails um, to actually find the proper match. So, you know, again, that, that sort of manual approach or intervention as is needed will, will happen. 
When a final response from HMRC is received from the Child Trust Fund, where it was a fine CTF or it was a my CTF where we've had to send a form, um, then an email is sent to the young person. So an email again, because it's only an account provider information and contact details. There is nothing in there that the will determine an account number because HMRC don't know that, they won't provide that. It's quite important also to remember that HMRC are giving us or the young person the name of the account provider as it was when it was set up. Um, and we have experienced times where that account could have been moved. So if someone has already been the re um, registered contact in the past and decided they were moving it, HMRC are probably going to be providing where it was actually set up. And many times account providers don't always have the paperwork trail um, if it's older than eight years because they don't need to keep it. So um, that's just something to be aware of. But, you know, that doesn't happen frequently. Um, and approximate timescales, as mentioned before, for the my and so my CTF and fine CTF. Um, obviously, we'll rely on on other people giving us information. So, hopefully, that gives you a brief understanding of what the young person will experience. And we will hold their hand throughout the process. We will follow them along, and we have many, many emails and telephone calls from young people who have queries. We are happy to help them. So um, that's what we're here for. I'm going to pass you over to Des now. Okay, hi everybody. And so this part is just the process of young people claiming the account. So once we've done the search, um, we will send a confirmation letter um, confirming who the provider is, what the account number is, and the contact telephone number. Um, the young person then will contact the provider directly. Um, as um, Sue's just mentioned, sometimes we do have it where the HMRC can only provide us with the details and they open the account with, so we're not to know where the account was. So that has happened in recent months. So that's quite um, one to bear in mind. Um, once the young person has got through to the account providers, they the account providers will confirm with them what their verification program process is, i.e. the two forms, majority of the time it's two forms of identification. Um, bank statement will be definitely one. And we appreciate not all young people will have um, a utility bill. So it's worth while doing like certified copies of passports or driving licenses, if they have them. Um, we don't ever recommend to send in um, originals. Um, and then we do have some relationship with some of the providers so if the young person is struggling with any of the providers we can obviously get involved where where we can basically just to help them sort out any any issues they may be having but by and large it is the young person especially if they're 18 the it's it's them who has to basically deal with the provider but we're, we're more than happy to help um, some we've had recent um, queries where the young person hasn't actually got a, a bank account. We do though know that Metro Bank are pretty good at the moment at supporting um, young people who've been in care, open up new accounts. So if any of the social workers or PAs are dealing with a young person, that, that is one um, provider worthwhile contacting. And that's that part. Is there any questions on that part? No. Okay, right, things to consider. Um, although obviously we appreciate the support workers, etc., do help the young people, you must let them complete document um, forms, etc. Um, we've had instances before where the social workers, etc., have used their email addresses, left, left to do pastures new, and then the young person's got no chance of knowing what email address or contact details they've provided. So please bear in mind, let the young person do it themselves. Um, change of contact details. Um, this, i.e., this is when the, this goes back to the data. So if there is a change of name and we are, we are the registered contact for the account, it must be provided on the data. So we will then contact the provider before the young person gets to 18 to let them know that there is a name change. And obviously if you have any um, documents, we will pass that on to the provider. So there's no issue once the young person goes to claim their account at 18. 
Um, we there are some known problems with um, CTF. Uh, sorry, young people are not eligible for CTFs. Sorry, um, so young people have been in care. And those would be um, asylum seekers um, and people who haven't been in care for a year. Next one, please. Um, and we do recommend that whenever we send out letters, anything, um, please let the young person keep hold of any communication we sent out to them. Because again, we have quite a lot of phone calls because we appreciate they move around a lot as well. So just to stop delays and us having to resend and post, um, yeah, try and encourage them to keep hold of any letters we send out. Um, known problems with account of oh, limited capacity where obviously this is done on a case by case basis really obviously we, we appreciate there are going to be some young people who have limited capacity um the financial providers would normally want to see um a court document to say they've got limited capacity and then they, they'll take it from there and liaise with whoever's supporting the young person and um young person in prison again with the support um this is quite a funny one because you've got um, the social workers working alongside them um, and they only get limited time on the internet. So again, it's sort of done on a case by case basis. And again, it will be a matter of liaising with the financial provider because they, they should have systems in place to um, cover this. Okay, any questions on this part? No. Thank you, Des. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to pop in there as well, just to say, so for for young people in prison, we appreciate that internet access is is probably a no no. They won't they won't have it. Um, so please do, as Des said, um, ad hoc basis really. So we do have inquiries about that, and we'll try to help where we can in terms of that. It's a case of somebody filling out that form, and it's a case of finding out who the account provider is. But if we, we, you know, we've got our main contacts at the local authorities. So if we need to send specific information, we can send it to them. So we will try to work around where we can. Um, and the same with um, uh, the limited capacity, that really is about the appointee. The appointee will be the one that will have to prove to the account provider that they actually do have some form of, of appointeeship for them to be able to pass over that money. Um, and deceased young people, again, that will come through the data. So if a young person, um, is uh, if the young person dies then it does need to be submitted on the data so that we can actually then produce a beneficiary letter which will go to the main contact and explain to them how they uh, would be able to contact the account provider um, to prove obviously that the young person is deceased because that that money will become part of that young person's estate so I just wanted to re-emphasize those three because they are very much um slightly slightly different in terms of how they may work or slightly different in terms of what you may need support from in terms of our support or other people or the account providers input as well so um hopefully that clarifies a bit more